This is Justin Stone from EliteBaseball.tv. And what if I told you there was one drill that could give you more power, keep you from the dreaded rollover, put you on outside pitches more consistently, and keep you from committing to off-speed pitches so soon? And there is one drill that will do that. And what they all those issues have in common is that it's lack of sequencing. Getting the body to filter energy from the ground, through the core, up the upper body, and out the back. How that happens, and the reason why all those flaws exist, is that typically hitters reverse their sequence and swing from the top down. This is why the front shoulder pulls off early, causing an extended bat path, and then rolling balls over. Not to mention the lack of power because we're not generating the swing from our lower half anymore. The drill that we're going to show you is one I call continuous pitch. It's in our 12-week sequential hitting plan, but we're going to go into it with further detail today and show you how this one drill can add so much more boost to your offensive production. The term sequencing means this. We're trying to get kinetic energy from the ground through my lower body and filter out through the rest of the swing. So this means the body parts have to load and unload in a certain order from the ground up. What you find most youth and amateur players doing is swinging in a pattern that I call a one-piece swing, where the hips and the shoulders fire at the same time, or even worse, we've reversed the sequence completely and the upper body begins to rotate before the legs initiate their drive. This means we're powering the bat with the upper body and the arms only, and we're taking away the strongest muscles in the swing. The legs are the biggest engine that we have within power of the swing, but the core is the second biggest engine. However, it's not an active participant unless we make it so. And how we do this is creating upper body resistance to the lower body's drive. When the lower body begins to open up, we want the upper body to resist that turn, creating more torque and stretch across the midsection. Think of this like a slingshot effect. And this is what makes my torso turn much faster, as well as slotting my hands tighter to my body. All of this increases our rotational speed. and does some other things for us other than just more power. This is going to allow us to commit to the ball later, so I get more information about the base, baseball. This means I'm seeing spin better, so I'm not going to be as fooled on off-speed pitches. Plus, the biggest problem that youth hitters have, and amateur hitters as well, is they struggle away and off speed. Reason being is I have to stay in this upper body resisting position longer to be able to hit those pitches effectively. If I reverse the sequence or I'm firing upper body and lower body at the same time, I'm always pulling off that pitch away or committing to the off speed pitch too soon. The continuous pitch drill works in a few different phases that I first teach in a dry setting. I want to see that players can advance and begin to turn their lower body without their upper body beginning to turn. So when you see this, you see my lower body being able to initiate the drop with my hip chassis while my front shoulder stays right in place. How this happens is creating an upper body scapula. This is what gets you the torque across your midsection. And the rear scap and the muscles around it is really what keeps your front shoulder closed. So you see me beginning to fire my lower body, but only as much as my upper body can maintain its position through resistance. Should my lower body turn too much and my hands come forward in the drill, that would be too much for what we're looking for in this initial blasting phase of our lower body. Should my lower body continue to fire further in the drill, you would see my rear elbow beginning to slot. Although it's still providing resistance back, the lower body is stronger than a resisting upper body. And you would see that rear elbow beginning to fold down as my scap begins to fold under against my rear hip. So I'll work these two scenarios in a dry setting. The first one, just starting the lower body fire against the upper body, maintaining its scap load, and the rear elbow not slotting, the front shoulder staying in place. Next, I'll let the lower body fire just a bit further where we feel the resistance of the upper body continue, but the rear elbow beginning its slot, which would look like this. You can see how my barrel begins to turn rearward. As my rear elbow slots, this is beginning the on-plane portion of my backpack. 
When you do this drill correctly, you feel a tremendous tug all the way around your core. That signals that we're doing this right, that our upper body is resisting, you're feeling the core tighten up, creating that later slingshot effect. So how we finish the drill with the ball on the tee, the continuous pinch means I'm going to stride and pinch once, reset, back into my rhythm. Stride and pinch twice, reset, back into my rhythm. And the final one, I'm not going to think, I'm just going to finish the swing in sequence. So what we're doing is trying to create a body pattern. The body will remember we remove thought on the third one and continue the pattern. One of the problem issues you'll have initially in this drill are players that are used to firing their lower body with their rear shoe versus with their hips. So they have a hard time feeling that tug across their core because they stride and turn their back shoe and kick it out. Notice when I do this drill correctly that the shoe initially turns to the instep, to the inside, and my heel doesn't turn rearward. So that's one problem area that you can check. Next, second problem we have in the drill is that players' hands will begin to cross their face as they start their lower body drive. And it'll look like this. They're used to starting their hands with their lower body or even ahead. And we shouldn't ever see a pattern where our hands initially make their first move across their chest. This would be an extremely short swing, one that inside outs the ball. But we're not creating that kinetic energy flow throughout the bat, which is what's giving us that extra boost of power. These are players that have usually been taught extreme hands-orientated drills, taking their knob to the baseball, but this is not the most efficient way to transfer energy from lower to upper body. So take the time and learn it dry first before you add the ball to the tee, because it's the pattern of the body we're trying to capture here. And by doing so, you're going to add a swing that boosts you in power. It's going to help you use all fields as well as waiting on the dreaded off-speed pitch. For more drills like this, come check us out at EliteBaseball.tv, free for 48 hours.